The Leviton Ultimate. It's a lovely beast, this, but a tricky one to master. So a few people have asked us, how do you go about it? And this is my way of showing how to make the Leviton Ultimate work. It really works, it'll do for any of the Leviton series. Unpacking the box, you find instructions, which are worth looking at. And then the beast in the middle, it's got the strong magnets, and around here are the other pieces. These are the little levelling devices, which keep the top absolutely level. And that's one of the two tricky things you have to learn to do, is twiddling things to make it level. This is the monster that's going to actually float in the middle of the air. It's a, most, it's a very strong magnet and very remarkable to hold on to those very firmly. And these are the weights. And the last piece is the main job itself. Is a big circular ring magnet sitting in here. Oops. And immediately the top's being attracted to it. So the first thing to do is just to keep the monsters at bay is to take the pieces and where there's three holes around the outside is screw them in. I do it all the way to start with because then when you find it's not quite level and no table is completely level you need to be able to slowly unwind them and that'll lift up that corner where the top's misbehaving. So I screw all three in and that really is about all you need to do to get it started. So it might be on a very level table, perfectly level field, but in fact you'll find there's very slight differences. This piece goes this way up incidentally. I, need, I don't know why they've made it with a dimple, perhaps that's for the packing purposes. It sits there very nicely, but for working it, that's going to be upside down like this, and it's going to sit on the top. You're going to lift it up with the right weights, and magically it's going to lift up a tiny bit more into a sweet spot about there, and there it will stay for ooh, at least a minute and a half or two minutes. We can play tricks. That's the aim we're going to do. They don't suggest very clearly in the instructions, but I always find the best thing to do is to overweigh it to start with. Put all the weights you can onto it so it's overweighted, so it won't lift up into the sweet spot. And then you can slowly reduce the weights. And I'll put quite a lot of these weights onto it and see if we can get it to stay down to start with. There's weights here which are, I think these ones here, the big, the big ones are three grams. There's the large discs. These ones are one gram. The red one is, is uh, 0.4, I think it is, and the others go down and down and down. The only one they don't give a weight to is this little ring here. They give you a, a spare one as well. That's, you don't need one of them. That's the last piece that goes on, which sort of snaps into position, and that holds the whole piece together. So that is now a heavily weighted Levitron top. And with any luck, that won't actually rise in the air. Then we turn this upside down in here, and there's three you could almost try spinning on a table to start with. You must learn to do a spin at a certain speed. You've got to learn to do a... It's, it's actually, um, I think the stability point is something like 23 revolutions per second or something, but um, it's something you've just learned to do by doing it again and again and again, and finally, eventually, you find it's, it behaves itself. So a bit of spinning off the, off the sweet spot to start with is a good idea. Oh, anyway, I'm lucky. Then we're going to lift up, and we'll find it won't actually rise up, I don't think. Any higher? No, it's not. And it's look, it's going that way. So immediately you can stop doing the waiting for a minute and start paying attention to the to the levelers. This one's got to be undone a little way so it moves further out, and that means this is going to lift up a little bit by a fraction. So I'm going to do about a turn and a half like that. So I'm not doing anything on the weights at the moment, just trying to see if I can get the thing roughly level. That's just about okay. So now we, we stop thinking about levelling, we start reducing the weights. I'm going to take off, well I'll just be gentle and take off this one here which is 0.2 of a gram I think it is. See if that allows us to bring it into the sweet spot. So there's still a lot of ballast on that piece. Put it up here again, another spin. That often happens with me. I find if I spin not quite hard enough, it doesn't take and it doesn't want to stay on, on, stay in the, in the, on the top. Oh, well, that's okay. No, it's too slow. It's going to be quite a fierce little spin. That's nearly there, actually. So now what I want to do is I want to take off the next largest weight of the heaviest weight, which is this one here. These are a lot lighter than these than the than the brass ones. Take off that one. I think I might put back on one of these just to get it a slight reduction because I'm getting we're getting close to the optimum weight. In the middle, give it a good twist. I don't think it's like quite level yet. It's starting to come towards me, suggesting that I've got to make a few adjustments. Yep, that means I've overdone this leg here. I'm going to 
wind it in a bit. By winding it in, it's going to go from that position to that position, a little more level. And I'm also going to take off another of the weights because I noticed it still wasn't rising up into the, into the um, focus zone, or whatever you call it, the sweet spot. So we're down to, well, we've taken off quite a bit now. We've taken off a red one and one of the greens. And we'll see if we're getting close to the optimum weight. And whether it's going to be level or not, the other way. Yes, that's almost in the sweet spot. It just is a tiny bit too heavy. It wants to come down again. So, it's quite a small reduction of weight now. That always has to come off every time. The other red one comes off, but leave the brass ones on. And I might just, I might just risk it like that actually, because there's, there's a fair at least one or two point one of the grams either way of it, and it's still happy to sit there. So there's, there's, a, there's a window. It's not so critical the weight as you might think. And it might be just about level too, with a bit of luck. Now there we are. It, it's whipped up in the air, and it's coming over here a bit. So I need to push that, undo that a bit, which is going to tilt it upwards that way, but a fraction of a second, just by. A little bit like that. And it is actually it's a bit buoyant. I think I'm going to put in one of the very small ones. I haven't yet used one of these 0.1 of a gram just to push it down a bit. There's a sweet spot from about there and there. It'll sit there and suddenly punch down and drop down. Or there's a bit where it's too high and it falls away. And you've got to find somewhere in that middle there where it just sits there very happily. Let's try that. And it Rises up into it. Now it's coming out this way. And I think it's still a bit too light actually. I'm going to take off the yellow one and replace it with a green one next to it up. I've got a feeling with these ones is the magnetic force is influenced by the temperature and if there's a change in temperature in the room, if it's cold the magnetic force is stronger and the thing will rise up with much heavier weights and vice versa. If this one might be changing temperature a bit with the people's bodies and lights on and things. Well, that's about it. That's about level. It's starting to punch down. It's almost as if it's going to punch down to the bottom again. No, not quite. I think this is about there. Let's have a bit of magic, shall we? Woo! Isn't that wonderful to see it happen? And after it slows down, at a certain point it'll start resetting a bit and then bump, it'll drop down, bump, and sit in the base like that. Woof, that was a lot of fun. It's all set now, but for this particular temperature, if there's a slight change of temperature in the room, you probably have to start again. Overweight it to start with, slowly reduce the weights, and reach that sweet spot. But there's a bit of practice needed, first of all. I think probably the trickiest bit of the lot is on the table, just practice doing lots and lots of that spinning it at a good speed. It's got to be quite a, really quite a strong speed to get it into that 23 to revs per, per second or whatever it is, it's, that's, that's probably the hardest part of it. The rest of it is just persistence. It pays.